Good morning and welcome to uh, today's presentation of Nordic Waterproofing. Nordic Waterproofing is a company that I have followed by arm's length distance for a long time due to its compelling equity story. Nordic Waterproofing keeps check of something we all need, a roof. Pat Olof, CFO, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So, yes, my name is uh, Pat Olof Skvedius. I'm CFO for Nordic Waterproofing since, uh, since two years back. Uh, and as Oriel said here, I mean, we, our main uh, uh, as I said, purpose here is to protect uh, roofs and buildings and infrastructure with, uh, with the products we have. So, uh, if we move to the next slide then. Uh, here's a little bit about uh, our history. Uh, basically, the, the first companies in the group were established back in the 1800s even, but the, 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 the modern Nordic waterproofing group that was founded in 2011 when uh, Danish Axel uh, acquired Trelleborg Waterproofing and the installation services from uh, the Finnish Lemmikainen. Uh, then during the private equity time here, 2011 to 2016, the group grew through acquisitions and, and streamlined the operations. And then we did an IPO in, in 2016. Uh, the, co the coming years then being listed on NASDAQ, we made further acquisitions and, and we also started to broaden the product portfolio into more sustainable construction solutions uh, with acquiring the, the prefabricated elements of the, the Teosinge in Denmark. That followed then several acquisitions in that area. And we also acquired Vectec in Vislanda in Sweden, a green urban infrastructure company with the Sedum solutions, among others, for, for roofs. Uh, that was followed by an acquisition of Distripond in Belgium in 2019, where it's, that was a, a downstream expansion of the Seleco business. Uh, 2020 was a, a, an, an unusual year, as we all know, and, and uh, the acquisition activity was quite low for us for, for obvious reasons. But we did take the opportunity to re-domicile the parent from uh, Denmark to Sweden. And, and uh, through that, uh, simplifying some, some procedures as well, including the dividend, uh, dividend process to our owners. 2021 was a new renewed acquisition drive that I come back to, and, and starting now 2022, we made one acquisition in UK already. So may I take the next slide, please? Uh, th th these are some photos of our products within products and solution where you have the traditional bitumen waterproofing membranes up to the, the left. You have the, the EPDM, uh, the synthetic rubber membranes uh, to, to the right of that. And, and then we see some uh, roof with sedum solutions and also the prefabricated wooden elements. And, and basically wh wherever you need waterproofing in, in the building, uh, that's where you can find our products. Next slide, please. Uh, we also have a, a segment for installation services, and there we basically in, in install the, the products we sell, like the waterproofing membranes, uh, uh, the, the, also the roof and facade elements in, in, in wood. Uh, we also have uh, two companies in Finland doing flooring uh, with, uh, with uh, like epoxy solutions. The green infrastructure we acquired last year, a company doing metallic facades and eaves systems. Uh, and then we also have two, two companies we have interest in where we install solar panels. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we are basically located in, in Northern Europe and in, in Northwest Europe, I would say. I mean, give and take 84, 85% of our turnover comes from the Scandinavian countries. And, and then our uh, synthetic rubber membrane business have activities in, in the Benelux and in UK as well. Uh, which basically means our business are quite stable. These economies are normally quite stable over a, a business cycle. And, and as well, what we see over business cycle is that we, we, we split between the new build and renovation 50-50. So when it's a high, high peak, so to say, we have more new built, and when uh, the, the, the building industry goes down, we do more renovation. Okay, can I have next slide, please? Uh, so it, it's very much based on sustainability, everything we do here, of course, we, with protecting the buildings to for better energy, kind of low, lower energy consumption, and, uh, as well as uh, waterproofing, and insulation and so forth. So uh, we, we can also say that our the materials we use uh, for waterproofing, that they typically have a durability of more than 50 years. And, and when, when they need to be replaced, they are typically a new layer is put on top. Uh, also, our wood-based solutions actually contain the CO2, 
uh, versus other materials that actually consumes a lot of CO2 in their, in, in, in their production phase. Uh, our, our green infrastructure con contributes with a big biodiversity and uh, also the, the solar panel installations is obviously a very clean, clean uh, energy solution. Uh, next slide, please. So talking a bit about acquisitions, as we said, I mean, we've done more than 25 acquisitions since uh, the IPO, and we, we basically look for three things. Uh, the, the first thing is if we can find solutions where we, we broaden our sustainable solution for the, the building industry. Uh, second is if we can enhance our products and service offering with, with uh, moving to, uh, say, a, a one-stop shop for our suppliers in, in some respect. Or if we can add value through downstream integration, like like uh, the district bond acquisition, as well as the Gordon Low in UK now. Uh, during 21 and 22, we acquired so far eight companies, seven last year and, and one in this year. Uh, we, we took a first step into waterproofing contracting in Norway with the acquisition of Big Partner. Uh, we, we broaden our, our say, geographical span for the ponds and landscaping following the, the district bond acquisition in 2019. We now uh, brought in that into Netherlands and the UK. Uh, Prefabricated wooden elements where we were already present in Denmark and in Norway. We now expanded that into Finland with the first acquisition of one company there. And as well, we brought in our offering within the urban green landscaping in Sweden with uh, more, more into larger solutions for, for roof landscapes. Uh, and, and we also did uh, uh, broaden our product portfolio, for instance, with uh, protection systems and, uh, and, and eaves in, in Finland. So we could say that, I mean, we doubled the turnover since the, the IPO through, through acquisitions and organic growth. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the financial development since the IPO. So last year we had a turnover of almost 3.7 billion sec. Uh, it, it's basically doubled since the IPO, and I would say that one third of the growth is organic and two thirds come from acquisitions. And, and as I mentioned, we basically 85% of our sales comes from the Nordic region here. Uh, our EBTA last year was 515 million, and, and that has as well uh, grown nicely over time. And we had a weaker year in, in 2017 to 2019 due to higher input mat uh, input prices on materials and uh, also some lower result initially from the acquisitions made. Uh, the the higher, higher profitability in, in recent years now, 2020 and 21, is, uh, is to some extent an, an uh, effect of the positive impact we have from the pandemic with the uh, uh, people not traveling, st more rather uh, staying home, taking care of their houses and the gardens. Uh, but as well, we we successfully managed the cost inflation, generally speaking, and, and also had some operational improvements that, that were certainly the volume helped. Uh, our main, uh, say, profitability measurement is actually rose, the return on capital employed, and at the end of 2021, we were at 16.6%. Uh, what, what we measure against is we have a threshold of 13% uh, that we should not go under. Uh, it's worth noting, though, that we have uh, in, increased our capital employed, uh, partly due to acquisitions, of course, but, but also that we have uh, in, invested in having a, a rather high inventory, both of raw material whenever we can, but as well as uh, finished goods to secure our capability to deliver the, the last two years. Okay, we can have the next slide, please. So, a few things about the, the current situation that I think is very, very obvious for all of us with the, the the Russian war against Ukraine here. If, if we isolate and look at our group, I mean, we, we don't have any subsidiaries or any employees in, in either country. So we're not exposed in that way. We, we do have some sales, but uh, uh, to, to these two countries, it, it's less than 0.4% of our total sales last year. Uh, and and, and uh, obviously right now we, we, we've cut the sales in, 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 uh, to, to Russia. Uh, the, the input material uh, supplies we have relying on Russian material that we have discontinued uh, and whenever we can we replace that with uh, with our other suppliers. Uh, our, our direct exposure to Russian Russian input material has been is, is really limited. It's more in, indirect our suppliers than in, in different ways having having that supply. So short term we really don't expect an, uh, an impact on our supply chain and capability to deliver to customers. 
Uh, however, we see that there is an increased uh, input cost inflation, which, say, medium term will might lead to a softer demand for construction, as we see that the, the cost for construction goes up. Uh, but it's, we, we're monitoring the situation, and it's more macro factors having an impact, I would say, rather than uh, than than uh, our, our initiatives, so, so to say. Uh, also, in our subsidiaries, uh, several companies here, we have uh, in, in different ways uh, so supported uh, Ukrainian refugees with donations from our employees that has been met with, uh, as, as well with with uh, contributions from our companies. So yes, and can I next slide, please? So short on our financial targets, we have a sales growth as a financial target where we want to exceed the market and we we feel that we typically our market grows with GDP and we have outgrown that in, in the period here. Uh, pro profitability rose to be above 13 percent. We uh, we're certainly there now and the capital structure with a net interest bearing debt in relation to EBTA to be below uh, below three and uh, we are currently say 1.3, 1.5 in, in recent quarters here, so we, we have a good uh, good uh, headroom there as well. And when it comes to dividend policy, we we uh, we have distributed more than 50% of our net result uh, for for all years here since the IPO. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, short about our fourth quarter. Then uh, next slide, please. I think the highlight is, I mean, we, we've, we've seen that demand remains strong as it has done in uh, coming into the first quarter in 2022. It's it's on a stable level for the roofing business on, on our markets. Uh, we had some challenges in installation services, as those of you who, who follow us have, have seen, where we had a lower profitability in the fourth quarter, partly because of the situation with uh, component shortages, but as well that we had, uh, in particular, two companies where we had uh, operational issues that we we, uh, we we are for confident we're going to solve during 2022. Uh, I will say in the medium term we've seen the dramatic cost inflation and uh, that has might have an impact on on the demand going forward. So and and regarding the, the input cost inflation in products and solution we we have absorbed these well through price increases and we managed to keep our margin there. Whereas in installation services that has been more of a challenge and we've seen some margin compression. Uh, due to the increased prices on input material. Uh, but, but still, I mean, our, our core, our legacy business is the, the bitumen based uh, waterproofing membranes, and, and the Seleco showed, showed good growth in the fourth quarter here. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, com coming back to then uh, a little bit on the numbers in the fourth quarter, we had a we had a turnover of 890 million uh, sec. Uh, growth was 16 percent to a large extent driven by acquisitions with 11, but as well organic. And it's worth noting that in the organic, it, it includes price increases, uh, and we would say that price increases quarter over quarter were more than five percent. So volumes were slightly negative. Uh, EBTA was up not from 93 to 97 million, but the, the return on sales was uh, was reduced, main, um, driven by installation services for the reasons I mentioned before. And our return on capital employed remained on a, on a high level here. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? So yeah, just summing up a little bit about Nordic waterproofing. I mean, why be a shareholder in, in our group? And and uh, one one reason is, of course, we have a strong market position on basically all markets where we where we are present. We we offer sustainable solutions, and uh, we we say that in the construction industry, our sensitivity to the cyclicality is is low. So we we are fairly stable over a business cycle, and uh, we have a strong financial position with a strong balance sheet and. Uh, at the current share price, in in particular, I would say we have an attractive yield with uh, with a uh, high high dividends. So with that, I think I stop and and I will pass it back to you, Arian, for yeah, for your questions or, or the audience questions. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Per Olof. Uh, starting with your organic growth, uh, it accelerated in Q4. Uh, to 5% relative to the full year of 4%. And you said mo most of that or all of that was actually price increases. Uh, where, where do you expect organic growth to head in the, in the first half of, uh, of 2022? Uh, and, and which are the drivers and what risks do you see that organic growth will not be as strong 
let's say, as we saw in fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I would expect the GAG growth to continue to be be on a, on a good level, as I say, in, uh, in 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 our legacy businesses in the bitumen uh, based the water uh, waterproofing membranes, and as well as in the Selecco going into 2022. Uh, and, and the, but I, th I still think a large portion of it will be will be driven by price rather than volume, as it as it looks right now. Uh, and, and that is because of well, we had a significant input cost inflation, and we managed to to move that forward to the customers in that area. So I would say so. Then wh where do I see a risk? I, th I think it's to a large extent depending on the macro factors. I mean, what what is what is happening is from from where we are right now, and. Uh, uh, and second, uh, the, the whole input cost inflation, it, it hits the building industry quite a lot, as, as I'm, I'm sure you're aware. So uh, will that put a bit of dampening on, on the new constructions going forward that uh, we haven't seen it yet? We haven't seen it in the order books, so, so, but, uh, but say long term, that, that could certainly happen. Okay, thank you. Um, you you touch upon the margin contra contraction we saw in the fourth quarter, uh, and that was primarily or entirely driven by the installation business. Um, what measures are you taking? I think you seem very confident to to restore the margins there. But what measures are you taking here? Is it price increases or is it some something else uh, that that you are uh, working with right now? I, th I think it's a couple of things. I mean, if, <clears throat> if we look at the installation services only, where uh, where margin compression was to to some extent driven by two companies where we had operational issues. There, there. I mean, we've taken actions to to mitigate that. We, uh, one was uh, the Norwegian company we acquired a year ago in in, in installation services in Norway, where we uh, unfortunately lost management quite early after the acquisition, and and now that has been replaced uh, since uh, six months back and. Uh, and we feel confident that we, we're doing the right, <coughs> excuse me, doing the right things there. G generally, I would say it's more about uh, how how can we manage a situation where where cost inflation is uh, as it has been in in the last say yeah, twelve months maybe, where where we need to go back to the customers and and try to uh, adjust uh, adjust contract prices for uh, for input uh, input cost inflation that that we did, could could not foresee or could not hedge for. So uh, I think they were looking at terms and conditions in contracts that uh, to to have that opportunity to at least a larger extent than we had before. Okay, uh, I think the um, uh, the uh, inroad you're making to urban green and and those those kind of uh, products is very very interesting. It's very kind of hot right now. Um, how is the organic growth in, in that area? And just to understand about the pricing, is it much more expensive uh, right now and you need to grow the business to, to kind of drive down unit costs? Uh, could you elaborate a little bit on, the, on how, the organ, how, how the urban green uh, development is ongoing? I think if we go back a little bit in time, when, when that company was acquired, the, the first one, the Vegatech in 2018, that was a, say, a market with not that many companies participating and, and, and prices were on, on a very attractive level. And, and then during the, since then, more, more players have moved in and we've seen a price compression in both 2020 and 2021, I would say, on, on, on these markets. And now, now we... we 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 think that will not continue, or at least we think we can manage it through d different offers to different customers who are willing to pay, uh, say, yeah, d different amount of money for for the solution. If you if you're willing to pay for a better solution, we can certainly uh, off offer that. But if you really just want a something green on the roof and and uh, don't care too much about what substrates or, or or what components are in the the material, we. We, we have say solutions for that as well that we can offer to a cheaper price. That will be the strategy going forward, and, and that's a little bit what we what we got in, in in our portfolio with acquiring Urban Green last year. So, so I think it's it's a it's a very very attractive area to be in, and, and we see that we can expand that further. With the, I mean, volume will will help. We are, we still have say a lot we can do in both Denmark and Norway as well in in this area as well as certain geographies in Sweden. So. So we, we look forward to that. Uh, thank you. Uh, to put solar panels 
uh, on a roof while you're changing it is of course a very smart way to, to, uh, to, to partly finance the investment. How do you see the different, act, different um, actors in the value chain here? Will you be just a buyer of solar panels or could you think of being more integrated into the solar business in order to kind of bundle the deal in a, in a better way? Yeah, I, it, it, you shall never say never to anything maybe, but, but I, I would probably think it's more likely that we will be, say, not stepping into the manufacturing part of that business, that we will rather uh, buy the solar panel or the, yeah, the solar panel material and, and, and install it as a combination with, uh, with our other businesses. Uh, that, that would be the preferable choice, I, I see at least. Mm. Um. When you have done a lot of acquisitions uh, and going forward, when talk about acquisitions, what, what is your preferred route? Is it growing the product portfolio or is it rather expanding into, into new markets? Where do you see the biggest opportunities and, and the most attractive uh, routes to, to grow by acquisitions right now? I, I think the first thing we look for is where we can find more sustainable solutions into the building industry. And uh, and, and if that is, so to say, if we can broaden the business within our our prefabricated wooden elements, that, that would certainly be attractive. Uh, we, we can definitely move downstream for, say, the, the Seleco business, the synthetic rubber membranes, and, and as well we see opportunities with new products. I, I think we also normally work quite clear that when, when it comes to say the bitumen based uh, legacy business we have, uh, we, 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 we are not likely to move down to mainland Europe for that. We, we really don't have any, any synergies in any area to, to expand that business further um, beyond Scandinavia. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> bitumen business, you're addressing that. We see skyrocketing oil prices right now. How sensitive are you to uh, these uh, movements? Because bitumen is, as we all know, a, a byproduct in, in an oil refinery. And do you have um, kind of hedges in place? Uh, or is this going to be a, a major headache for you, you think? It's hard to predict the future, but but I, I don't think it would be a major headache. No, it, it, but it might have some minor impact, uh, sh short term at least. But what we found is that uh, we used to do uh, do hedges for bitumen, but but we also see now during the last two years that uh, we 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 can adapt our prices quite quite fast. Typically, when when we have input cost uh, inflation on our side, so so we we have no hedges in place uh, right now. Uh, but but we've, we've seen significant price increases in the last two, three months, and we, we think we can, uh, we, we can move that forward to our, our customers. It, it, it might be with some delay, but we, we still believe we can move that forward. But uh, uh, yeah, depending on the situation and how we, if oil price would continue to develop, it's, it, it could certainly have, have an impact sh short term. But uh, so, so far, we, we think we can handle it. It's also worth noting that bitumen is not the only component in, in our products. It's, it's, it's a third. There are, there are uh, about a third of the cost in, uh, in, in the product comes from the bitumen. Mm. And it's also worth highlighting that bitum, bitumen-based materials is not all of your product mix. You have a much broader product mix as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Per Olof. A very interesting presentation. And that ends uh, today's presentation from uh, Nordic Waterproofing. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you.